All right, folks, let's uh, look at a few more of these. Um, for alkene oxidation practice, this is the answer to number 10. Number 10, when you first look at it, looks like a real head scratcher, right? This is actually an easy problem that is diabolically disguised as a hard problem. Did I say that right? Yeah, easy problem that looks like a hard problem. First of all, these molecules look very, very different and they look complicated and you're like, oh, I don't even know where to start. Where do we always start in a situation like this, right? I always start by looking at my carbon skeleton and doing some counting. So if you count the carbons here and you count the carbons here, there's nine in each. And you might be thinking, oh, that is a huge relief, right? Just because there's nine in each though, that doesn't mean that the carbon skeleton is the same. So look at the carbon skeletons for each of these real closely for a minute and see if they're the same or not. At first glance, they kind of do look the same, right? Like check this out. There's a one, two, three, four. There's a kind of five carbons here where something is attached to the middle carbon. It's like you see that over here too. One, two, three, four, five carbons where something's attached to the middle carbon. And then you have four more over here. So at first glance, they're the same, but, but really they're not. Check it out. For these five, where one is attached here, there's no methyl group here. Over here, for these five that are attached, if you go one carbon over, oh, something is different about this one and that one, right? So if something is different, that means we're gonna need to do some surgery on this molecule. There's some other weird stuff too, right? So here is a carboxylic acid on a primary carbon. It's like none of these primary carbons even have functional groups. If they had something there, we could convert that into an acid, but the fact that Right? There's no functional groups anywhere here, 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 means that this is really odd. Like, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our clue that we're gonna have to do surgery on this molecule, right? We're gonna have to somehow break it apart and stick it back together again. So my hunch is, if we're talking about breaking apart, we're talking about alkene oxidation, and we're talking about the hot acid flavor. So I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna go ahead and rip this thing apart and see what I get. So here's my alkene, right? I'm gonna do potassium permanganate on acid. Remember what that does. That will actually cleave this apart. That cuts clean off. This thing gets oxidized as far as it can go. And this thing gets oxidized as far as it can go too. So now I have two products. I have this one, which is essentially something that looks, we'll draw it like this. And this being a secondary carbon is gonna get oxidized to the ketone. Ooh, here's a primary carbon, and it's getting oxidized as far as it can go, too. Oh. So that's going to be an acid going up here, here, here. So after one step, now I'm down to here. Now things are starting to look a little promising because guess what? This piece now looks a lot like that piece, right? So these pieces are put together. And now I just need to somehow take these carbons and stick them over here. So I need to have that reaction that forms new carbon-carbon bonds. You'll remember that that reaction is Grignard. In order to get Grignard, to do Grignard, I need a haloalkane and we could use a couple different things, but oftentimes aldehydes are ketones. Hmm. What do I have here? A haloalkane. What do I have here? A ketone. So what happens if I turn this into a Grignard? Let's find out, right? Adding magnesium in the presence of ether. Actually, I'm just gonna like rewrite on here instead of writing that whole thing out, right? This then becomes MgCl. Now this reacts with this, right? So remember, where is my nucleophile? It's actually on this carbon right here. Right, here's my partial negative. Where's my electrophile? It's attacking this carbon right here, which means that there's gonna be one bond that connects this one with that one, right? Which means I'm gonna have, oopsies, that's sloppy. So this one, here's the new bond that gets formed, da, 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 right? It's gonna attack this one right here. So we'll go ahead and put that carbon in. And this, instead of being 
the ketone is now this. And I can do that workup step by adding H2O. When I add H2O, that actually puts the H plus on here. Bam, and that gets us that product. All right, so this is number 10. Let's look at 11 real quick. And actually, I'm just gonna talk you through 11. In order to talk you through 11, I want you to see if you can find the solutions, right? So these are the solutions to the Grignard, um, uh, Grignard, uh, not Grignard, alkene oxidation practice exercises. If you don't have these solutions right in front of you, go grab them, pause the video, I'll wait, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, number 11 is legit a hard problem, right? So number 10 is an easy problem that looks hard. Number 11 is actually tough. Right? But again, when I look at number 11, one of the things I notice is the carbon skeleton is different. Right? And when I look at my reactant, I have a five-membered ring there on the left. And then when I have the product, I have a six-membered ring. So I know I'm going to have to like, rip this thing apart. In order to rip it apart, I must make an alkene. Right? Uh, and so one of the ways that I can make an alkene, the way we do that is through elimination. Uh, and I know I need to rip the ring apart. And so I need to take that OH group and eliminate it. That implies I'm gonna use E1, right? That alcohol dehydrogenation. Again, if you're like, ah, I don't remember exactly how to do that. It's okay, just use your, use your free gift and go through there until you find what you're looking for. So you're gonna rip that ring apart, right? Uh, using hot alkene oxidation. And then we have to do ourselves a little redox, right? So we've ripped it apart and now we're gonna put it back together again. Remember in putting it back together, putting it together is a Grignard reagent. Ripping it apart is alkene oxidation. So in putting it together to do Grignard, what I need to do is have the snake bite its own tail. Nom, 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 right? You're gonna need something like a ketone or an aldehyde on one end, and what's on the other end of Grignard? A haloalkane that you've turned into the Grignard reagent. And so that's what we're doing sort of in that, in that uh, step three, we're preparing a C double bond O. In step four, we're preparing our Grignard reagent. And now the snake can bite its own tail. Those pieces can come together to make a four membered ring. And last but not least, we're doing um, another elimination to get rid of that tertiary alcohol and make the, the uh, alkene again. Number 11 is tough, right? So that one is, is, if you notice, quite a bit harder than the rest of them. So if you had problems with that one and you struggled a little bit with that one, don't feel bad, right? That's okay. That one is a, a challenge exercise for those of you who are up for a challenge. All right, this is a nice segue into the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is total organic synthesis. So stay tuned for that.